Hello, guys, my tour starts like really soon and some cities are already sold out. So don't sleep on getting tickets, okay? You can get tickets at my website, curtisconnor.com. But here are all the cities I'm going to in June. If you live there, get a ticket because these shows are coming up soon. Okay, thank you so much for all the support. I hope to see you all at the shows. Enjoy the video. Okay, folks. It's time for a rematch. Almost a year ago, I made a video called Barbie vs. Bratz, where I watched a Barbie movie and then I watched a Bratz movie to see which doll movie franchise is better. So go watch that if you haven't already, but spoiler alert, Bratz movie was better. Better or better? I don't know. Bratz won the first video, not because it was a better movie. Uh, I just hated Barbie's little sister, Kelly, so much. <laughs> And yo, after I uploaded that video, some crazy stuff happened. The official Bratz account reached out to me and offered to send me some dolls, which was really nice, but why would I need the dolls when I have the real Turbo Man at home? So that was nice of Bratz to reach out, but from Barbie, nothing, man. I, I didn't get shit. It's fucking radio silence. I mean, which is understandable because I made fun of that horny weasel for like the whole video. And then I use that ball oh. sound effect in like every single one of my videos since the Barbies and Bratz video. So it makes sense. But as of right now, in the current standings, Bratz one, Barbie zero. But I also got a lot of comments from you guys saying that I didn't pick the right movies to talk about. And a lot of you said it was like an unfair matchup. So I figured we would revisit this rivalry and uh, see if Barbie can tie it up. And uh, if I could just be transparent for a second. Okay, that's probably good. And now if I'm being honest, for the first Barbie vs. Bratz video, I sort of just picked random movies to pit against each other. But for this video, I did some research. I scoured the internet. I I, I, I read blogs and, and listicles and articles and and everything. I, I, read, I read it all to find out what the best movie of each franchise is so I could pit the best two against each other, right? That's a good way to tell. So first off, we're gonna watch Barbie, Princess, and the Popper. And then right after that, we'll watch Bratz Rock Angels. Based on what I've read online, these are the best movies of each franchise. So by the end of this video, we should know which doll movie franchise is better. So like I said, we're gonna start with Barbie, Princess, and the Popper. And that's Popper spelled P-A-U-P-E-R, by the way, not P-O-P-P-E-R. Uh, that would be a fucking crazy kids movie. <laughs> Barbie doing a bunch of drugs and freaking out. Actually, I'd be down. So this movie came out in 2004 and it was actually the first Barbie musical ever made. It's also based on the novel Prince and the Popper by Mark Twain. I've, uh, I've never read that. So this movie was like a whole new story for me, which was cool. But I gotta say up until like a week ago, I, I didn't know what a popper was. Like I thought it was like a job, you know, like an occupation. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a popper, right? Sounds like someone who like cuts leaves off of flowers, you know, a popper. But I looked it up and popper literally means a very poor person. <laughs> Pretty nuts, not just poor, very poor. So I guess it makes sense why they went with popper instead of the actual definition, right? Barbie and the broke ass bitch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. So the movie starts with a nice little voiceover from Barbie. She explains that a long time ago in a kingdom far away, there were two identical babies born in the same village at the same time. They weren't related or anything, but they are pretty much exactly identical. So I think, I think the mother and father both have some explaining to do there. But the one baby is named Annalise and she was born a princess. And the other baby, Erica, was born uh, not a princess. She's very poor and she works all day as a seamstress in the village. They were so poor. <laughs> How would they be able to care for their little daughter? Okay, I know that it's not supposed to be an insult, but the way that she said it, it kind of it kind of sounded like a, a read. Mom, but they were so, so poor. poor. Yeah. Little broke ass losers in their broke ass fucking basement apartment. They don't even stack bread like I do. But now we fast forward in the story. Uh, now Annalise and Erica are young adults. And at this point in time, Annalise's dad, uh, the king, he's unfortunately passed away and things are not looking so good. The kingdom's gold mine just like ran out of gold. So the whole kingdom is gonna go broke now. So in an act of desperation, the queen decides to force Annalise, her daughter, to marry a rich young king named King Dominic, who lives in a nearby kingdom. Nearby lived a rich young king who was seeking a wife. Even though if you're so worried about your kingdom going broke, maybe like sell some of the nice shit you have in the castle that you live in. You know, just a thought. That is not queen behavior. Now we get the first song of the movie. I don't want to play too much of it because I don't want to get a copyright strike, but this song features Annalise singing about how she doesn't want to be a princess 
uh, with a bunch of responsibilities anymore. It also features Erica singing about how she wants to not be so uh, goddamn poor and overworked all the time. And I'll say right now, dude, the music in this movie fucking rips. It is so good, dude. Seriously, like my favorite part of this movie was the music. It's really well done. The songwriting is smart and clever. But this song might be my least favorite just because of like the subject matter. What would it be like to be free? Kind of hard to feel bad for the rich princess, you know? Like, if you were gonna see Barbie in concert and you watched her sing this, you'd be like, actually, I'd be pretty impressed because it's like a plastic doll, like, how is she singing? But, but if you heard someone sing this song live, you'd be like, okay, fuck you, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wish I didn't have so much money. Like, it's kind of giving off the same energy as, like, the, the Ace family when they worked at, like, a restaurant for an hour and they were like, guys, we, they, we're doing it. We are literally working right now at a restaurant. We have a job right now. I've been taking orders. We're just like you. People will gather around the world to hear my song can i come along <laughs> oh no <laughs> that was so sad erica you didn't even answer her you fucking asshole um, can i come along <laughs> oh. okay so after their awesome song about income inequality we cut to the old gold mine like Minecraft. And in the mine, we meet the queen's advisor, Preminger. And this is where we also meet his two henchmen. And also his poodle that has like a like a New York accent for some reason. Ah, oh, you better hope you got nine lives. Hey, I'm being taken on a walk here. That was the best New York dog joke I could think of. I'm sorry. Central Bark could have done something there. I don't know. Uh, comment your best... <laughs> New York themed dog joke. But this is when we find out via song that Preminger is the real reason all the gold in the gold mine is gone. Apparently he's been secretly stealing all of the gold so Annalise will marry him. Which is super gross because this guy's clearly old as dick. And also like, wouldn't the queen be like, hey, where'd you get all that gold? <laughs> Weird that we immediately ran out of all the gold and now you're sitting on, and now you have a pile of gold? That's an exactly a mine's worth of gold. Okay, that's weird. You know what I mean? That's a little suspicious. Also, like that, this is a part that I don't really understand. Like if the gold was really the thing that was powering the economy, wouldn't it be out there powering the economy? Not just like sitting at Preminger's house? I don't think the gold is responsible for the economy. I think all the, the poppers working day in and day out to, you know, keep the cycle moving is the thing that's powering the economy, right? And while they keep everything going, the fucking queen and the princess sit in their ivory towers and worry about a gold mine that has no effect on anything. Honestly, dude, this movie is like a genuinely good critique on <laughs> capitalism and the disparity of wealth. It's honestly some hard-hitting stuff from Barbie. But anyways, uh, Preminger finds out halfway through this song that Annalise is gonna be marrying King Dominic. Like, it's already arranged. What? So he decides that his new plan is to kidnap Annalise and then bring her back a few days later. And then once he does that, everyone will be so grateful that uh, he'll get to marry Annalise. Which is a really weird plan. Hey, I know you were just attached to a ball and chain, but like... Will you be my ball and chain? <laughs> also, bro, you have a pile of gold. That's what you want, right? Power, money, you have it. You have it. Like he could just go buy a castle if you wanted and just rule another kingdom. He has so much fucking gold, but like he's hell bent on just marrying someone. This is what no bitches will do to you, man. <laughs> Weird motivation aside, that's the new plan. In this next scene, we meet another main character, Julian. Uh, he's Annalise's tutor. Don't make, Don't a, make fart a fart joke. joke. You can just, just move, move on. on. You can just you move just on move to the on next thing. He stands there and he toots. <laughs> so you here to like teach me something? Fart? It's my duty. He's like a tutor. He teaches Annalise how to be a princess and like school and everything. He's a tutor. Tutor, I hardly know her. And it's heavily implied that Annalise and Julian are in love with each other, but obviously they can't get together because Annalise is set to marry King Dominic. But on that day, Julian takes Annalise into the village for a little field trip, and this is where they hear Erica singing off in the distance. When your spirit rides on the winds of hope. So this is where Annalise and Erica, the babies from the beginning of the story, meet face to face for the first time. It's like a Spider-Man meme type thing where they both realize they look exactly alike. Well, almost. Annalise is blonde and Erica is a brunette, and also, Annalise has a royal birthmark, as they call it, in the shape of a crown. So when I first watched this movie, I thought Erica was going to have a birthmark as well. Maybe she would have something, like, related to her, right? 
Uh, but she doesn't. She doesn't have any birthmark. But man, it would be so funny if Annalise showed her birthmark, it was a crown, and then Erica showed her birthmark, and there was just a line of text that said, I'm so fucking poor. <laughs> they should have done that, man. And then we get another song, and this one fucking slaps. I'm just like you. I think that's true. You're just like me. Yes, I can see. This is the song I mentioned before that was a meme. A very early Twitter meme, I think. So the tweet would be like, when you find someone who also uh, likes tequila. <laughs> So they sing about how alike they are, but again, they aren't really. Aside from looks, they're not very similar. Like, at all, really. Like, this is how it should have gone down. You're just like me. Oh, ow! The fuck was that for? You live in a castle! Okay, this next scene is pretty insignificant to the plot, but I have to bring it up because this movie uh, continues a trope from the Barbie as Rapunzel movie. So Erica's cat rescues Annalise's cat from the New York dog, and this happens. Well, thank you, Wolfie Not Rover. <sighs> My name's Serafina. Uh. Yep, man, there it is. It isn't a Barbie movie without a fucking horny animal. <sighs> I've only watched two, but every Barbie movie has a pet that's about to burst. I swear to God. Uh. This one isn't as gnarly as the Rapunzel one, but it's still a bit much. Uh. Like, I just think we can have a Barbie movie where an animal doesn't make this face, you know? Barbie movies are the opposite of The Price is Right. Have your pets spayed or neutered. Okay, so now they head back to the castle, and later that night, Preminger's henchmen kidnap Annalise. And everybody at the castle's freaking out because they think Annalise just ran away because she's scared to marry. King Dominic. But Julian is pretty suspicious of Preminger, so he hatches a plan that involves Erica. Pretend to be Princess Annalise. <gasps> yeah, shocker. We knew that was coming. So now Erica uh, gets to cosplay as uh, a rich person, a princess for a little bit, which is great because that's what she wanted. And Annalise has been uh, kidnapped, so I she didn't really get what she wanted. Oh shit, unless this is like another like big brain commentary on society. In this life, you're only a, you're either a princess or you're a pauper. So she didn't want to be a princess, so she wanted to be a pauper, but what she got was imprisonment, right? But that's kind of what poverty is, right? Like you're you're kind of trapped in a system that you can't really escape. So you know what? She actually did get what she wanted. Man, this movie genius. Okay, so now we get into yet another song where it's Julian telling Erica how to be a princess. Uh, and this low-key might be my favorite song in the whole movie, but there was one part that I had to like play over and over again, and then I actually ended up looking up the lyrics because I was really confused, and it was this part right here. Never show a thing you feel inside. Glide. So the actual lyrics are never show a thing you feel inside. Glide. But I thought he said never show a thing you feel inside. Lie. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so funny to think that there's a guy teaching the princess how to be the worst possible person ever via song. Princesses lie, that's what they do. They don't wipe their ass or tell the truth. Princesses steal, yes, that is true. And they throw lit matches at the local youth. Okay, so I'm gonna try to go quickly for the, the rest of the movie because we still have a whole other movie to talk about. So, Erica pretends to be Annalise and it goes okay for the most part, but Preminger is confused how the princess is at the castle, obviously. Annalise escapes by pretending to be a ghost oldest trick in the book, but is unable to enter the castle because security doesn't believe that she's the real princess. I am the princess. Then how come I just saw the princess eating dinner with the queen? But also, if the security at the castle is this tight, how did those two fucking henchmen get in there and just steal the princess? You know what I mean? Annalise has nowhere to go. She goes to the dress shop to find Erica, but is locked in there once she's mistaken for Erica. And then there's also a quick scene where the henchmen accidentally sing the beginning of One Two Step. The princess is here! Also, while Julian is out trying to rescue Annalise, he gets fucking kidnapped by the two henchmen. Major bag alert for sure. Major bag alert. Also, I have some questions about the, the lore in Barbie movies because uh, in Barbie as Rapunzel, humans and animals were able to like talk to each other and understand one another. But in this movie, you know, only humans, like they can't talk to each other. It's up to you now, Serafina. So like, do these all take place in the same universe or is it all just like completely separate stories? This is all like, like the Barbie multiverse. Maybe it is in the same universe, but Barbie was just high on poppers. <laughs> she just thought she was talking to fucking dinosaurs and, and rabbits. Oh, man. It must be all separate because if this was in the same universe, this movie's plot would be solved in like two seconds. The fucking cat could just be like, hey, uh, Preminger's evil and the real Annalise is at the, the dress shop. That's a girl that looks just like her. So I understand why it's different in this movie, but Barbie lore aside, the animals are still horny as hell. That's 
That's good that that's the one through line. <laughs> so Preminger eventually finds out that Erica is pretending to be Annalise. Um, and he changes his plan yet again. And his new plan is to kill Annalise and just marry the queen instead. But again, dude, I'm still so confused about Preminger's end goal. He wants to become rich and powerful, but he ha again, he has a mind's worth of gold. So why do you need to marry someone? The queen has so much responsibility. You have to share all of that gold with her and the kingdom, the whole kingdom. Again, weird motivation, but this is the new plan. And when push comes to shove, man, Preminger's got game. Definitely a bold time to ask somebody out. Marry me, for how can you refuse? Yo, I know your daughter just died, but like, you want a new one? Aha, yo. Okay, so Preminger traps Annalise and Julian in the old gold mine, like Minecraft. Oh, but they're yeah. able to escape again with the help from their sex-crazed cats. And while this happens, Preminger is about to marry the queen. They, they move fast in this kingdom. <laughs> Okay, yeah, real subtle, man. <laughs> okay, now we got the big climax. And not the not the cats. Ugh. Annalise shows up with Julian and stops the wedding. Preminger falls into a cake. And then there's a happy ending where Annalise ends up with Julian and then Erica uh, leaves the kingdom on her own to pursue her dream of becoming a famous singer. And I first watched this movie, I was like, fuck yeah, that's such a cool ending, right? Because all these movies always end up with like the girl getting with the guy. Like, it doesn't need to be that. A guy, you don't need a, a guy to make you happy, right? So that was cool that they, they leaned into that. But then literally a minute later, she was just like, eh, just kidding, I'm back. I'm gonna marry King Dominic now. Sometimes being free means choosing not to go. But the movie ends with the two couples getting married at the same time. No! No! Dude, we were so close! <laughs> we almost went the whole fucking movie without seeing Kelly in her creepy, ugly, stupid fucking face. God damn it, dude. I gotta put a jump scare warning, man. This is the actual ending of the movie. Uh, it ends with a, a little narration from Barbie. So let's see what she says. And of course, Wolfie and Serafina lived happily ever after, along with their many, many, many kittens. Okay, had to emphasize how much sex these cats are having. Thanks. Many, 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 many. They cannot stop fucking. Many. Okay, so that was Barbie, Princess, and the Popper. I'll save my final thoughts of this movie for the end because we still have one more movie to watch, and that movie is Bratz Rock Angels. This movie came out in 2005, and it's widely regarded among the the Bratz fandom as. One of, if not the best, Bratz movie. And this was just according to my research. Okay, I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of comments being like, no, Bratz in space was better. But this is just based off the research that I've done. Fun fact, there was a, a video game tie-in for this movie, which is always a plus. You know, video game tie-ins are always good. And this movie features the Bratz starting their very own rock band. So without further ado, let's watch Bratz Rock Angels. And yeah, that's Angels with a Z. We say Z in Canada, but if I say Z, all the comments are gonna be like, what letter is that? If I say Z, all my Canadians are gonna be like, wow, dude, you fucking switched up on us, you said. So I can't win. My life is a literal nightmare. Sorry, let's, let's watch the movie. So the movie starts with the Bratz washing a car together because... Our concert's in less than one hour and this car's gotta look good. And then their hit song comes on the radio and they all start playing along with their electric guitars that aren't plugged into anything. And it's very funny to imagine what this clip would actually sound like. And I don't know about you, but I'm wondering how the girls with a passion for fashion became rock stars, and whether or not it's an awesome story that started while they were hanging at the mall. Wondering how the girls with a passion for fashion became rock stars? Well, it's an awesome story that started while we were hanging at the mall. So we cut to the brats hanging at the mall reading a fashion magazine. One of the brats named Jade shows up and announces that she got an internship at Your Thing a uh, popular fashion magazine. The one at Your Thing magazine? Everybody's super excited, but then these two mean characters named Kirsty and Casey show up, and they hit a mean T-pose. Because they're twins and seriously evil. These are like the bullies of the film, obviously. And the only defining characteristic of these characters is that Casey has had like 20 nose jobs because she always gets hit in the face with stuff. And she gets hit in the face a bunch of times in this movie. And I'm sad to admit it, but it made me laugh like every single time. This is classic comedy, man. You're just like me. 
This scene is when we're also introduced to Dylan and Cameron. You guys will recognize Dylan if you watch the uh, my first video about Thrat's fashion pixies, because he's the guy in that movie. But this Cameron dude, he's like a, a cool skater guy, and Chloe actually has like a huge crush on him. Yo, Chloe, I spy your Prince Charming. Also, Chloe like rips at skateboarding too. Is there anything these girls can't do? Aside from using the letter S at the end of plural nouns. So now we cut to Jade's first day at her internship and her boss, Berdeen, is like a huge asshole. You work for me. And this scene is just like a montage of Jade having like just the shittiest day ever. And I don't know if I addressed the music in Bratz movies in my last video, but man, the, the music they make for these movies, it's so fucking funny to me, man. It's like reality TV show pop music, you know, where it's like the most generic shit that like vaguely relates to what's happening. Working All right, man, I'm sorry, man. You passed me the ox, I'm playing this shit. I'm gonna bump this shit all the time. Hey, what are you listening to? Huh? What are you listening to? Oh, uh, working overtime from the Bratz movie. Oh, yeah. hey, thanks. Thanks so much, man. Wait, what the fuck? So ultimately, Jade gets fired from her internship because uh, she's just like bad at her job and she sucks. But I Bam, your excuses, you are. Fired. Hear me? Fired! But to take another step away from the plot for a second, I gotta talk about the animation really quick. This is an animated film. If you didn't know, these aren't real people. And I know Bratz isn't going for realism, but compared to the Barbie movies, you could just tell that the, the Barbie team worked like way harder on actually making the animations look like fluid. Like people in anime, they don't move like real people, but it's like stylized and it's like deliberate. So it's enjoyable to watch, right? But in, the animation in the Bratz movies are always like so like robust robotic sort of i didn't notice as much in the fashion pixies movie but in this one it was like really blatant i feel like they were on a time crunch for sure and also sorry this is what made me notice it this scene right here phone cord goes through the statue phone cord goes through statue that's rule number one that's rule number one of movie making phone cord can never go through statue that really took me out of this I thought it was real until that. <laughs> but now back to the plot. Jade is super bummed that she got fired. So uh, to cheer herself up, she goes on a shopping spree. Shopping! Which is a great coping mechanism to teach to kids, right? I'm sure every parent loves that. Buy things. Buy things when you're sad. Buy Bratz dolls especially. It helps. helps. And obviously you can't have a shopping spree without some super generic pop music. It's a girl thing. Just having a little fun. So once they're done their shopping spree, they all get the idea to start their own fashion magazine to get back at Berdine for firing Jade. We should really have our own magazine. So then they all decide on the roles that they're going to have uh, for the magazine. I could write an advice column. And I can write about trends. The music editor. And I'd be the most cutting edge lifestyle editor. <laughs> Wait a they must be really good friends if they just automatically knew that Jade was the one to be the lifestyle, lifestyle editor. editor. Like, what, if, what if one of the friends was just like, and I'd be the most cutting edge. The janitor! Or, what? You need to leave! All right. And guys, I hate to say it, but there's another mistake in this movie. I know. No way, kidding! Let's let's start our own team magazine. You just had to cut off the last let's. They're supposed to say it all at the same time. Let's let's, let's start, start our own magazine. magazine. And yeah, I know it's a simple mistake, right? It, it's easily missed, but like you're going up against Princess and the Popper, man. You got to bring your A game. And yes, when they made Bratz Rock Angels, they knew that I was gonna review it on my YouTube channel 17 years in the future. So there's no excuse. So that's the main plot of the movie, believe it or not. The movie called Bratz Rock Angels is about them starting a fashion magazine but now they're freaking out because they can't afford an office what about an office no way we can afford one which is like for a magazine i feel like that's just bad business you know i feel like you should make the magazine first and then you know maybe generate a little bit of revenue until you can invest in some office space right you know but hey i don't have a passion for fashion so i guess i can't speak on it but they end up finding a rundown office space in the same building as Berdine's office where they end up sharing the same elevator um awkward I am so glad to be out of there. <laughs> Trying to be so quiet and not get noticed by Berdine. And as soon as they walk out, like beside her, as soon as they walk out of the elevator. Oh, I'm so, I'm so glad, glad to be out, out of there. there. She almost heard me. Okay, also this movie does like a lot of like weird cutaway scenes to like emphasize a punchline or like um, illustrate a point a little better. If she sees me, I'm beyond dead. 
but like some of them like aren't obscure enough to like tell if they actually didn't happen or not. Like this next scene, when I first watched this movie, I genuinely thought it was a real thing that happened in the plot. Miss Queen Burdine is going down. Like, it seems like it just happened after that, right? And how insane would it be if Burdine legitimately fell down an elevator shaft and died and that's how they showed it in the movie? Oh, fuck, that's funny. It didn't actually happen, though. She, she didn't fall down an elevator shaft. Okay, so now we get another montage. There's a lot in this movie. And this one features the Bratz doing a huge renovation of their shitty office space, and we get yet another generic pop song. This is how we do. Now they've got a super styling office for their fashion magazine, and then we get this iconic scene. Ew! It's a sound effect. That's a sound effect I use in my videos. This format has a lot of meme potential for sure. Ew! So now the brats are finally starting to work on their magazine. They're looking for like leads and what stories they could write about. And then they end up looking through the invitations that Jade actually stole from Berdine's office to see which awesome party they can go to and cover for their magazine, which is yet another good lesson for kids, right? You can only get ahead in business if you uh, steal from your competitors. They find an invitation for an opening of a new punk rock club in London called Pins. Invitations to the exclusive opening of Pins. And yes, that's pins with a Z, obviously. That's the one through line. Every word that ends with S in the Bratz universe, it has to end with a Z. Hey, I'm a Bratz gal, and I've got a passion for fashion. And I also have syphilis. So yeah, we're 25 minutes into the movie about the Bratz starting a rock band, and we we just had the first mention of rock music. The most hap new punk rock club. So they're going to London now. They're taking a, a flight to London in like a semi-private jet, it seems like. And I would just love to know where the Brats are getting all this money from. Not even just for the plane. They had to put down at least first and last month's rent to lease the office space. And then the cost to clean it, paint it, buy a bunch of furniture. And now they're flying all the way to London to write about the opening of a punk rock club in their fashion magazine. Maybe when you guys were claiming roles, somebody should have been the accountant. Like, did I miss a whole part of the movie where they like shopped around for investors and shit? <laughs> Was there a movie called Bratz, The Seed Round? You know what? Fuck it. Going forward, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add up all the money they're spending, roughly. So I'm gonna assume that they live in LA because it's always sunny and shit. They got palm trees, right? It just looks like LA. So what? A rundown office space in downtown LA? What's that, like a $1,000 a month? So let's say $2,000 for the first and last month's rent. And all the cleaning supplies and paint and furniture, that alone is probably like 10K. And now plane tickets from LA to London for five people, right? No, seven people because Dylan and Cameron are coming for some reason. So that's around $9,000 for the just the plane tickets. So far they've spent like $21,000 and this is me being conservative. I don't see women as people and poor people should die. Sorry, that was me being conservative, but I was also being conservative with the, the cost estimate. So while they're on the plane, Chloe meets this guy named Nigel, who's like this British royalty guy and Chloe's like immediately in love with him, which doesn't sit too well with Cam. But they make it to London, they get into their bougie hotel room, which probably brings up the price to like 25k if they're staying there for the weekend. And yes, I know it's silly to make a fuss about how much money they're spending when this is just an animated movie about a bunch of dolls making a fashion magazine, but this is my YouTube channel. I will complain about shit that doesn't matter all I want. But since they're in London, now it's time for another montage with another generic pop song. And then we cut to Berdine and the girls who are also on the way to London to beat the Bratz to the punk club opening. And the next little bit of the movie focuses on the Bratz creating content for the fashion magazine while Chloe just blows it all off to hang out with Nigel. And like this movie is doing a lot, but I think the movie's biggest offense is making people think that this is what every British guy is like. They're not all like this. You know that meme <laughs> where it's like what Americans think British guys are like and then what they're actually like? This movie is just British guy propaganda. What you should be doing is taking a propaganda at real British folk. Thank you for the corsage, Nigel. It's beautiful. I'm gonna get my Aprilla out and do burnouts on your front lawn and then I'm gonna chuck mud bombs at your nan's windows, you silly bastard. So some more filler bullshit stuff happens in the movie. Up until Chloe is dumped by Nigel and uh, she's having this dramatic, sad walking in the rain moment when her shoe falls off and she just keeps 
walking, I guess. And then Dylan shows up on a motorcycle, nonetheless, which is about around $1,000 for the weekend if you're renting a motorcycle. He shows up and he gives uh, her shoe back to her. But dude, the framing of this shot made me laugh so hard when I first watched it. Hi. <laughs> Motorcycles make guys like more attractive, right? There's proof right there that that's not always true. Hi. Hi. Okay, well, we're getting close to the end, I promise. So the brats finally make it to the punk rock club and it's fucking lit in there, dude. Yeah, it's not. Uh, they gotta get some pixies up in there, dude. They, they know how to turn it up. Hi, I don't know how I didn't mention this in the script, but this is supposed to be a punk rock club. Look at that. That is not a punk rock club. <laughs> it should not be that bright. There should be people fighting in the corner. There should be people like having sex. There should be someone with like an IV drip of like beer going into their veins. This is inaccurate. And now the movie shits. It doesn't shit, it shifts. Now the movie shifts its focus entirely to an upcoming charity rock concert that's coming up, so everybody's getting ready uh, to go to the show. Bratz Magazine hits the Save the Universe concert. And this is when Burdine does a spot-on impression of every Harry Styles fan on Twitter last week. If I don't get tickets ASAP for that sold-out concert, I'll hang both of you by your ears from the top of Big Ben. Ah! And then the Bratz lose their tickets to the show. So they get the genius idea to just start their own rock band so they can be let into the venue. Let's become a rock band! Which is, I, I mean, pretty genius. I didn't know that would work. I, uh, I gotta remember that trick, to be honest. If I wanna go somewhere and it's sold out, I just gotta show up with an electric guitar and be like, sorry, buddy, I really gotta get in there. I play guitar in the band, so. I think you're confused. There's a ping pong tournament in there. So you're telling me there isn't a Daughtry concert tonight? No. Oh. Yeah, I'm really sorry, man. That's okay. I'm going home. Excuse me, sir. Get in there. So they buy a bunch of clothes so they can look the part of a rock band, so we'll add a couple hundred bucks there. And they also take a limo to the concert, so we'll add another couple hundred bucks there. Then it's revealed that the band that was supposed to perform at the concert broke up. Your band broke up? So the Brats go on stage instead and perform the song that they wrote at some point. And I don't know how they're all just able to play the guitar out of nowhere. I think, I think that's a little preposterous. Or sorry. Preposterous. But yeah, the movie ends with them playing the longest song ever, and then they become super famous and successful. Yeah, so let's revisit Barbie, Princess, and the Popper, and we'll give it a score out of 10. Like I said before, I really enjoyed the music in this movie. As frustrating as the plot was in this film, I I enjoyed it. It was actually like pretty fun to follow all the, the twists and turns that was going on. Obviously, this movie had an upper hand on the Bratz movie because it was based on a novel by Mark Twain. But still, the conflict was believable for the most part, and, and I liked it. And the overall lesson of the movie is a good one. And that lesson is obviously learn how to speak cat. So I'll give Barbie, Princess, and the popper a seven balls out of ten. It would have been an eight, but they showed Kelly at the end, so I had to take a point off. And now let's talk about Bratz Rock Angels. Dude, I'll be honest, after Bratz Fashion Pixies, I thought this one was gonna be great. You could say my expectations were high, but dude, half of this movie is just boring filler. Like nothing goes on. There's like no real conflict that's like consistent. The fucking movie is called Bratz Rock Angels. They don't become a rock band until like the last 10 minutes. And they only do that for their magazine that they just abandon to become famous rock stars. Like it's so weird. Also, they spent like $30,000 for their magazine to just abandon it out of nowhere to become rock stars. Like that's, Bruh. it pains me to say this, but I am going to give Bratz Rock Angels three ears out of 10. So the winner this time is Barbie. <laughs> fucking tied it up she did it rats won barbie won. so i guess now we gotta we gotta do a tiebreaker i guess i'll just have to wait for the live action barbie movie to come out so i can hit that one against the the live action brats movie that'll that'll be the finale to this trilogy i guess okay you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk let's cut to my identical twin who is not related to me. We were just born at the same time in the same village. I think he wants to tell you about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Inkbox. You like tattoos? Of course you do. You're cool. And do you also hate commitment? Of course you do. 
you're cool. And since you're so cool, you should give Inkbox a try. Inkbox tattoos with 4Now ink last one to two weeks and fade away as your skin naturally regenerates. It's applied easily right at home, which means no painful needles and also no tattoo artist that takes uh, 30 smoke breaks in one hour. No offense. <laughs> All you have to do is wipe your skin with the included primer wipe, stick the tattoo on your skin, leave it on for one hour, peel it off, and the tattoo fully develops over the next 24 hours. And unlike other temporary tattoos, Inkbox tattoos actually look like permanent tattoos, as you can see. And they also don't wash away in the shower. And when it comes to what you can actually get tattooed, the sky is the limit. Well, not even. No, there's there's no limit. You can shop thousands of designs from their global artist community, and they also just launched an official tattoo collection with Gorillaz. You know, the band. There's a bunch of designs on there that'll make you feel good. Like the song. They also just launched the Inkbox subscription experience. It ships every three months and your first welcome box contains six surprise tattoos designed by artists around the world. Check it out. And then the following boxes include six exclusive tattoos based on a unique theme and you get to choose the tattoos that you receive. With the Inkbox subscription service, you can stay tatted all year long. And it's also an amazing way to save money on Inkbox because with the Inkbox subscription service, you can save up to 80% on Inkbox tattoos. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and try Inkbox today. I promise you're gonna love them. Okay, thank you so much to Inkbox for sponsoring this video and so many others in the past. Back to me. All right, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please slap the like button because one like equals $1. We can take off of the... the the brats uh, spending spree because they're out of control. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. I know I said some crazy stuff, you know, some controversial shit in this video. So uh, let's talk about it. Also, you can press the subscribe button uh, because as soon as you do, you become a valued citizen of Curtis Town. If you didn't know, Curtis Town is the best place to live in the world. And I'm the mayor of Curtis Town. So you have to be nice to me. It is the law. Uh, you can check the description for all the other shit I do. My Instagram, my Twitter, uh, tickets for my tour. That's starting up pretty soon. All right, thank you for watching. I would stick around, but I have to go. I have to fall down an elevator shaft. Goodbye. <laughs>